I'm all out of little pewter anvils, so in this video I'm going to make a silicone mold using Mold Max 60 so that I can make some more. This is the first round I did with the castings on this little anvil right here. Uh, and uh, this was the pattern. I made this out of Sculpey clay while watching TV at home. Cooked it in the oven and got it where I wanted. So that was a good pattern for making this, uh, this mold. And so I made this two-part mold right here. And uh, I made it kind of small. And I cast, oh, 20 to 30 of these anvils in here. But I really, the design was not that great. And uh, I, I designed it so that I would pour it through the corner. And that was really a bad decision because when you try to pour the pewter in that, uh, it runs all over the place. And I really didn't have very good uh, static head of the sprue over the top of the casting. So sometimes I would get voids in the casting. But anyway, this thing, uh, was kind of a poor design on another aspect, and that is that the sprue right here, I had going in the corner of this thing. And so I had to do a lot of work to clean that up. And then over the 20 or 30 castings that I did with this mold, I started to develop some imperfections. So it got to be difficult to clean these up. And so I've decided to abandon this and make a, a new one. So today, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm going to do a mold that looks kind of like this. And so this is, of course, the anvil upside down. And I'm going to put it upside down. And I'm going to have my sprue come in through the bottom here. So that's a nice flat surface. I should be able to cut that off of there and clean it up relatively easily. And I will leave myself room so that I can add a couple of vents if I need to. I'm not sure how much gas needs to come up out of this thing. I think if I make my sprue hole big enough, uh, the gases should escape without the need for vent. But I will leave room for the vents in case they're needed. I'm making a little box here that uh, I can pour my Mold Max 60 into when I, I make the mold for this pattern. Now, this is not necessary, uh, but I like to have a little box that's fairly square uh, because you can produce a nice uh, kind of geometrically true mold. And I'll show you the reason for that in a second. Now I'm making this out of some thin plywood. That's not required here at all. I've seen people make these boxes with all kinds of things, including, you know, old wax milk cartons and things like that. So I just put a little super glue on there and hold it. And this will be the bottom part of the mold for making the mold. So what I do is uh, I make this three part piece or four part piece and then I leave the end off of it and then I'll use a tailgate, if you will, and rubber band it and then I'll pour my mold max into here around, around my pattern. So why do I need to have my mold square? Well. Here's one I did. This is the previous video if you want to see it. This is a little doll hand that I did. And these came out so nice. They really did. I, I was really happy with this, this run here. But I made this little rectangular box. And when I'm pouring, I like to uh, put my mold in between some surfaces. Now here's one of these little boxes here. And I just put a little piece of plywood. And then I can put a clamp or something like that on here. And I seal the seams on this. So by doing that, I have a nice uniform pressure on the rubber all around. Now you can put a couple clamps if you want, but I found that just the one in the middle, you know, with a fair amount of pressure is perfectly adequate. So that's why I like my molds to come out somewhat square with somewhat true surfaces. My little box is uh, made, and so what I'm doing here is I'm using non-hardening clay such as you can buy at any hobby store. And I'm just making a pad uh, for the pattern to go into. I'm tamping the clay all around the margins of this. This just happens to be a little leather working tool that I'm using. And it's got this nice little square head on it and it'll kind of get close up against the pattern there. And I'm just kind of mashing the clay in there 
until I get a real nice, well-defined parting line. Again, you know, the more time you spend on this step, the better quality the two-part casting is going to be. Uh, you don't want to have any gaps in here because the more gaps you have, the more flash and the longer time it's going to take you to clean stuff up. It's really fun when you pop one of these things apart and there's almost no cleanup. You know, all you're doing is just a finishing, maybe a little sanding and polishing on it, but you don't have to get into doing a bunch of cleanup of the flash. using my stylus to go around the margin of this thing one more time here just to make sure there's no extra clay and that we're well compacted all around the edge. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to push in my acorn note nuts. These make really excellent registration points when you're putting the two parts of the mold together. So put those in there and then uh, I'll put a couple of uh, dimples in here that are kind of the negative of those on the side. So I'll have four, four registration points here that'll help me to get this mold, two parts of this mold together in the best and most precise way possible. I just remembered that a YouTuber gave me a comment on the sprue he said uh, or she I don't remember who he said why don't you make a sprue and make that a part of your mold so that you don't have to go through the exercise of of cutting the sprue into the mold after it's poured and I thought well that's an interesting idea so I'm gonna go ahead and put the sprue cone right here on the top and uh, we'll cast it into this side and then we'll flip it over and cast it into the other side. So that's a good uh, improvement, I think. Well, there it is. What do you think? Now, I, I like these hair bands here. They work out pretty well to kind of put that fourth side on here and it's enough pressure to hold it together. There's the sprue. What do you think? Fingers crossed. To get it to release, I'll just put this little bit of Vaseline on here. It's really not necessary to put it on the pattern itself. Uh, the Mold Max does not stick to the Sculpey in my experience. And it doesn't really stick to the clay. So I'm just going to work on the box here itself so that my mold will pop out. All right, now, <clears throat> they tell you to put this thing on a precise scale and measure it out so that you have the proper proportions. But I'm not that guy. So what I do is I just put about this much in there. There's a dash. And I will come back tomorrow and this will be hard. It doesn't seem to matter how much you put in there. I think it just affects the amount of time that it takes to cure. So stir, stir, stir. And then boom, all of a sudden, it's all uniform color. Okay, so I've got my pattern covered with about a half inch over the top, and we'll let this sit overnight. Happy Wednesday, I'm back in the shop here. Uh, this is solidified, it's nice and hard. All right, so let's pull this one out here. Now see the tailgate should pop right off. There it is. And uh, we'll go ahead and loosen this thing up here and just wiggling it and boom, pops right out of there. So we'll remove the clay and uh, there's my bottom half of my anvil. And so this one I cast, you see with the sprue in place. So that's kind of interesting. I like, I kind of like that. So I'll complete the rest of the sprue when I cast the top half of this. Examining this under the glass here, and it's really a pretty clean mold. Uh, very little flash around the anvil itself, uh, some around the sprue. But that's not a big deal. I'll just take these side cutters here. You could use a razor blade 
and just kind of nip some of that out of there. And uh, the pattern fits in there very nicely. And that's the value of spending time when you're insetting the piece into clay to begin with is uh, you get that real nice joint and it minimizes the time that you have to spend cleaning it up. So he here's why I like to make these little boxes. Um, this piece fits in here pretty well. It's not a completely square but it's pretty darn close. So I can just kind of squish it back in there and then my little tailgate uh, fits right on there again. So that thing, uh, once I lube it up with some Vaseline, is going to be ready to pour the other half of the mold. Now one thing I did off camera here was um, I, I took the sprue part of the mold and I put it back in here and I created a second half for that. So I've kind of got this conical hole that I'll be able to pour the pewter down into. So that's been added. So I'll make sure I get a good thorough coating of Vaseline on the silicone surfaces and I'll work that right up into the seam the corner of the pattern there and uh, I want to make sure that that silicone cannot pour and touch itself because it will fuse together it's the only substance that it'll stick to reliably is other silicone <laughs> now for the pattern itself um, I'm taking a paper towel and I'm just kind of rubbing off the excess Vaseline. Uh, this is because the Vaseline itself has a texture and uh, if you leave that on the pattern when you do your casting, uh, that'll show up as a roughness on the casting and it's just something that has to be cleaned up. So to, to get the best possible casting, I will remove uh, as much of the excess Vaseline as I can. Something I've started doing that makes these easier to break free, I've got a palette knife and I just kind of run it down along the edge and uh, just kind of break the silicone loose from the side. And this thing is moving smartly around so I know that the silicone is really not very bound to the wood. So just go around it and just kind of loosen it up and that way I don't molest the mold any more than necessary when I'm getting it out of the mold here. So pulled right out and let's have the big reveal here. Now sometimes the edges of these can be a little bit stuck together, but it seems to be parting okay. And I'll just take my time getting the, it to split. I don't want to tear the silicone, especially in the area of the pattern. So I just kind of take my time. Oh, and it popped right out. And there we are, there we go. That's the two-part mold right there. And so I'll take my little piece of putty out, take the putty out here for the sprue, and there we have it. And boy, that looks really good. I, I'm, I'm anxious to, uh, to go do a couple pours with this thing. I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of cleanup the margins of the two halves look really good. There's just a couple of very tiny little bubbles. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's one right here. And that'll end up being a nodule in the casting in all likelihood. And there's a couple more here and here, but it should clean up pretty easily. So pull this out of here and the two halves go together and there's my, my pour hole. Let's go melt some pewter. Oh, before we do that, there is one small thing I always do uh, when these come out. Uh, they will have a little kind of piece of flash around the edge. It's, I call it the meniscus. You had your high school biology or whatever. And I'll just take a razor and cut that off because that little raised edge around the rim will prevent it from sitting completely flat. It, it, and so when you squeeze it to do the pour, uh, you may get a little bit uh, uneven pressure. It's, it's a very, very minor point, and I don't know that it's nece truly necessary, but I'll just take a single edge razor here, or an X-Acto, and I'll just chamfer the corners of my mold so that 
uh, when I'm compressing the mold between the two pieces of wood, uh, they're getting the, the best, flattest contact possible. I hate it when I have to apologize in a video, but I have to apologize. In a, an apparent psychotic episode, I somehow deleted all the files from the first couple of pours with this mold. And as you see, it's nice and dark. It's been well used. So here's where it is handy having these things be nice and square here. I've got these two plywood panels and I'm going to squeeze my mold. I'll put one that's kind of in the middle of where the anvil is and I'll squeeze that down pretty good. That's so I minimize the amount of flash that I've got. Like that. And then I'll put another one kind of on the, on the top of the mold in the sprue. And uh, I'll actually deform the rubber just a little bit. That way I know I have a real good seal. So now I can go ahead and uh, do a pour. Uh, I'm gonna clean uh, a little dross off of this here. Actually, that's not really dross. It's just uh, the metal cools off on the surface. So you don't have to throw a lot of it away. So a trick I've learned is that uh, when I do my pour, it's pouring out the side today. I don't know why. When I do my pour, uh, I will uh, agitate it a little bit. I'll move it around and tap it like I'm tapping it on the vise there. And what that does is I think it helps to encourage any gases to come up to the top. And so I've got a nice uh, level of metal on top of the mold so it, there should be no voids in this particular casting. All right about 10 minutes have gone by it should be plenty and uh, we'll open this up and see what we have here. I kind of over poured it <laughs> a little bit, but it's kind of interesting. This one has a lot of shrinkage in the top of the sprue, and that's where you want your shrinkage to happen. You don't want it to happen down in the casting. So hopefully uh, all the gases have vented out nicely. Okay. Uh, that is not too bad. Uh, that is not bad at all. Uh, you can see that um, I've got just the tiniest bit of flash around the perimeter of this. I don't have any shrinkage in the center of the casting itself. There's a tiny bit right there on the front, but that's not too bad. Now, there is some flash on the bottom, and the reason for that is that when I did my first few uh, molds, I was getting voids on this top surface, so it's like this when I pour it, and the pewter was not filling uh, these corners. So what I did is I tore away a little bit of the material of the silicone uh, to kind of uh, create a gas path or a vent. And so by doing that, uh, it caused uh, me to have uh, much more complete casts. Now this is very easy to clean off. This is a flat surface. I will cut that off with a bandsaw and then I'll take my uh, belt sander and I'll sand the base of this uh, nice and flat. So that's a good casting. I'll accept that one. I did not have any failures on this run. I, I'm very impressed with how well uh, these little castings came out. So I'm not going to do any finishing work on this video. I'll save that for another time. That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you got something out of it. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think.